think uh, an adventurous person and one who believes in right winning over wrong and a person who believes in God would like this movie. Uh, what was challenging about winning this picture? Well, I had some really long, like five solid minute speaking scenes and even though I've been able to go 11 minutes straight before in other movies, it was difficult uh, because the dialogue had a lot of elements from the past, you know, thousands of years ago, the way they spoke, and so I'm used to memorizing dialogue that's more like today's type of speaking, and I had to memorize, you know, the olden times type of speech, and you know, that was a little difficult. To, um, since this movie was based on a book, how much of the book was in it? Well, I would have to say that around 60% uh, of the book was in it, but the doctor told me they had to rewrite some new scenes to follow the theme of the Shadow Empire because they had not had a book about the Shadow Empire. And so they added some more scenes to you know, make it make more sense with Maradonia and the Shadow Empire, you know. Uh, why were you involved? Well, believe it or not, I went down there to only apply as an extra in the background, and Dr. Gary Tesh, he liked me so much that I was happy. I ended up as the lead bad guy, you know. Um. Who would you recommend this not to see? Well, children under, I would say, seven shouldn't see it because it's pretty scary. The evil scenes when I'm talking to all the devils in hell and when I throw fireballs and disintegrate people and, you know, that type of stuff. So I don't recommend anyone under seven seeing the movie. Um, what do you think the audience would think after watching this movie? Well, I think they would be excited to see what the follow-up is going to be like when the king clashes with the kids in part two. And uh, it was a good setup for the second movie, the way they left it. Um, what's going to surprise people about this movie? Well, uh... One surprising thing is the dragons flying around, and, and the computer effects are really good. And uh, I was uh, surprised myself about how good the computer effects were. All the, the fireballs, the molten lava, the dragon, the walls on fire, and you know, uh, I think and I think they'll like the performances of everybody, the bad guys and the good guys on both sides. And Bonnie, our camera woman here, she was an angel singing and turned into a demon, you know. Uh, uh, who had the best? Bonnie Amore. Who had the best costume? I like the glorious costume with the headband, the gold headband with the emeralds in it. And, you know, uh, her little boots uh, were really nice and... Uh, I had a, like a Liberace cape on, <laughs> but uh, oh, the soldiers with all the armor and you know their swords. Those were real swords. Uh, the the the, clo the clothing in this movie is really impressive. It matches the olden times. Um, who in the who in the movie is most likely a character? The most likable character? Who is most likely who acts like a uh, Gloria, because Gloria is a really good person and believes in God and everything. And Maya in the movie, her character is the same way. And uh, of course, I'm nothing like my character. I'm, I'm not super evil or anything. You know, and obviously I've never killed anybody. Yeah. So I guess you're not going 
guess this explains my other question. Who's the least? <laughs> That's probably me, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch more questions, but I think we're not going to get to all of them. Ask questions. me two more and then I'll we'll have, cut it. I don't have a uh, what, what person would love your character? Probably heavy metal uh, listeners would like my character because I look real heavy metal and evil and I have long hair and eyeliner on like they wear and you know and I throw fireballs and burn people and so I think the heavy metal listening audience would really like it, you know. Uh, um, how's the character like you? Well, persistent, persistent. The, my character, King Napoleon, is like me because I've been persistent and shot over 200 projects, you know, about 50 of them Hollywood. But I only had like maybe three or four minutes in the Hollywood ones, like Cronenberg Chronicles with John Landis, the director of Animal House and Blues Brothers. Uh, I had a a movie with him, Cronenberg Chronicles, that's posted on the internet. and So I'm kind of like persistent and like when I filmed one month with Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen's dad, Martin Sheen won the Oscar for Apocalypse Now. And Valerie Perrine won the Oscar for Lenny. She was also in the movie The Break. And so I've kept it going now like over 40 years with project after project after project. And King Napoleon, he'll stop at nothing to get his evil way of destroying Maya and Joey. So that's one way where I'm kind of like my character, King Napoleon. Um, if you had a chance to change the name of the movie, what would it be? I, I like the title. I don't think I would change it. I love the title. Mm -hmm. I've made jokes about changing it, but I'm not going to mention to what. Mentioned. I've mentioned it to Gloria, and uh, she laughed, but she knew I was only joking. But I'm not going to mention what I wanted to change it to. But I love the title. In fact, everybody that hears the title, they say they love it. You should probably turn the camera around to show Bonnie, the angel that turns into a demon. You were in the movie. You were with... The demon with the snake, you were right next to him when I was shouting near the beginning. Angelina's in the movie. Turn it around and show Bonnie here. And this is Bonnie, the angel that turns into the demon. Alright, thank you guys all for letting me interview you. And you guys heard it, go check out the movie. It should be good. Thank you. You're welcome, it was my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>